You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a guest in the building today. Goes by the name of Martin Shkreli. Did Not, I say that right? Yes, I gave him donkey of the day last week. Right. This is the guy who went at Ghostface, who jacked up the prices on the HIV AIDS pills. He had the goons in the background. Yes, he yes. came in here and tried to shake my hand. I said, nope, I can't shake your hand. I yes. need to know what you're all about first. All right. So first question, are you a privileged, entitled prick? No, come on, man. Break I'm, it I'm down from, for I'm me. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I was born in Brooklyn, you know, privileged. No, my parents are janitors, dude. I heard, I read. So, uh, my, my parents, to this day, you know, my mom still does that. She's making 50 grand, you know, it's not... A privileged family. I grew up in the streets, shared a room with my brother. You're talking about two bedroom, you know, four kids. You know, okay. I grew up the, the same way everyone in Brooklyn grows up. You know, we moved to Brooklyn, the most affordable place we could find, the most rent controlled place we could find. Roaches and rats. I think that phrase uh, comes from a certain rap music artist that you may be familiar with. The God Ghostface Killer. Uh, <laughs> you know what may, I mean? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, 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 I was actually thinking of Jay, but you know, whatever. Um, Ghostface said that too, though. Okay. Yeah, and all that I got is you. Yeah. Oh. So you grew up from the hood. You're from Brooklyn. You're from the hood. Yeah, I think so, man. So how did you get? How did you become this? How did you become so douchey? How did you become so rich? You know, I think that the media can portray people the way they want. You know, and look, uh, I'll give it back too. You know, you got a lot of people here. You know, to prepare for this, I watched you interview Kanye. Man, he can act like that too. You know, you know, Kanye this. could definitely act like a privileged, entitled prick. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, it's so so it's part of the the persona, the mystique. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a confident individual. But you know, after all that's happened, I, I do want to set some of the records straight. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, pr certainly not privileged, man. I, I've struggled, fought. I went to city college. I, I earned my way to uh, the top, and uh, I think I should earn a little bit of respect for that. All right, well, let's talk about this Wu Tang album you bought because that was. Did you we, bring it? First, we. Oh, heard it. I was, I'll, I'll bring it next time. I'll even play a track for you if you so want. So you paid two million dollars for this album. I did. Uh, you and you have fan? no plans Huge. to play it. Or well, what, what's the plan? What made you say I'm gonna buy this album for two million dollars? And it seems like you were upset that RZA wasn't talking about it. The guys weren't discussing. Well, it. I'll break it down from the beginning because you know this, this. You gotta put your lips on the mic, Martin. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll break it down from the beginning because this this is the number one place for hip hop. So I might as well, you know, if I'm gonna break it down extensively, I might as well do that here. Is that right? Yes, Absolutely. Yes. All right. So there's a lot of details, obviously, right? So obviously, when when the first news of the announcement came out. Clearly, you know, I was interested. Every, I think every every rich rap guy interested in rap was interested. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I uh, and maybe I can even take it back a step further to talk about why I care about the Wu Tang in the, in the damn first place, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I grew up in New York. I was a rock kid growing up. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not a liar. There's nothing. I'll never tell a lie in my life. Um, and I told Rizzo to his face as I said, "I'm not your biggest fan. You got to understand that from the from the jump. I'm not your biggest fan. I can't name every track on every." affiliated Wu album, like, you know, that's not me. Uh, let me be clear about that. But I remember, uh, again, being kind of a troublemaker kid, and I was I listened to rock music, this is back when we had cassettes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, I I had summer school one one year, because I was, I was a big derelict troublemaker, you know, kid. And me and this kid from the Bronx named Josh Martinez, we, we shared summer school classes together, like every year, because we were just always, you know, being being jerks in, in high school. We went to this rich kid high school. What school? Uh, Hunter High School on the Upper East Side. Okay. And, you know, we were like the two kids who didn't belong from, from the hood. And uh, Josh was uh, always listening to Wu-Tang during summer school, and I would always listen to, like, Nirvana or something like that. And he'd be like, let me hear some of that. And I'd say, all right, all right let me hear some of yours. And, and we, you know, we, we, we dug it. Let me show you my. Got to show you mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, basically, 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 basically. And and he's like, you know, I don't really get it, you know. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't really get yours. And but you know, it's you know, it's felt it a little bit. And then you know, I got back into rap. And one of the big reasons I got back into rap was actually the Chappelle show. Um, you know, I was getting into rap way before that, like a couple years before that. But the uh, when they had the Wu Tang financial skit mm -hmm. on the Chappelle yes. show, classic. That was a classic. And it really, quite frankly, I think it it it. It, it did a lot for Wu-Tang, it did a lot for rap, it did a lot for a new audience, because we looked at it and we were like, this is kind of, you know, it's truth is stranger than fiction. Right. Is that what made you want to get in the financial game? No, 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 no. Oh, but I was already in it. And you gotta diversify your bond. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when we saw that, we were like, this is truth is stranger than fiction. This is actually how a lot of us talk and act mm -hmm. in finance. You know, the real the real stuff. You know, we, you know, we're at hedge funds, we're at the top of the finance business, and we, 
we talk and act like this. We want to be like this. And we saw that skit. We we're like, holy, this is what this is what it's uh, this is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I got more and more to rap when the album came out. I said, I got to I got to own this. There's a lot of things rich dudes buy to just prove that, you know, you know, again, I don't know. what For tax purposes? You got no, no. OK. Uh, to show off. Rich. To show off. Exactly. Whose, whose penis is bigger? That's exactly what and I'm trying to say. Big... I don't know what words I can say here or not you say You can say here. whatever you want. Oh, it would be truly. a big press thing for you to buy this album that they were auctioning off. That's a part a of it, deal. but it's also to show your friends. It's your last companies or whatever. It's like, hey, f*** you. Look at me. I got I got this $2 million album. What you think about that? You know, guys do that all the time. I so mean, if you respect they? Wu-Tang, why disrespect Ghostface the way you did in right. that video? Because That's you know, a separate I, subject. I was, at a, I was at Bridget Capital yesterday, which is a great hedge fund well, place. Of course it is. I didn't see nobody in there with mask on, a bunch of goons talking crazy the way you was talking. Bridger, yeah, I wonder what you're doing there. Anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I was, sir. I know people, too. Damn. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's some That's some Illuminati shit right there. Yeah, don't worry about me. Okay. 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 I'm going to buy me a $2 million album one that, day. That just, that totally, <laughs> you totally changed every, like, my blew up my brain right now. He was just cleaning the toilet. Yeah. The toilet no, I wasn't, yeah, no. actually. But. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm going to sit... Uh, got to take a different attitude now <laughs> but uh no in all seriousness the um uh, look you know uh i have a tremendous amount of respect for the the whole clan you know uh, including ghost uh but we're talking musically right uh that's music there's a difference between music and real life and personas you said you own him you said he's like your I don't son. recall saying that. I did say son slave master slave all right that let me let me just end that right there yeah. you know that that's not the intent. You know, uh, son is a word that, you know, we use all the time. Yeah. Right? And it's meant to show disrespect. Like, you, you're as if you were my son. So you were disrespecting right? him? Of course. Why? Though? He disrespected me. How did he disrespect you? Oh, he called me a shithead, I believe. On, uh, said, well, hold on, no, no. <laughs> did you do? And, and his defense, I, I a, lot of recall... were saying, a lot of people were saying that because of the HIV yes, drugs yes, situation. Yes, yes, yes. Which but, will give you a chance to clean up. I'll clean that up. But, you know, at the end of the day... You know, it definitely felt like, look, the guy was taking shots at me mm-hmm. in the hip-hop game. As we all know, it's not easy to, to be on the receiving end of those things without jumping back. And but you're not hip-hop. You're Whatever. It doesn't matter, guy. man. It doesn't matter. Like, you can't, Look, even in finance, you take shots. It's not even a hip-hop thing. It's a man thing. You take shots at me, I'm going to come back at you, especially publicly. Mm-hmm. Especially publicly. And it, that's just basic bravado and the basic, you know, manhood. You know, I'm not going to let him steal on me for what? I feel like you want to be famous, which is crazy to me because you're worth forty five million dollars. I'm worth a lot more than that, but anyway, <laughs> wow. yeah. Okay, buddy. Uh, now, now tell us about the drug. What happened with the drug? Now they said that the drug, the pill, was what uh, thirteen dollars. You jacked it up to seven fifty. You jacked it up to seven fifty. Yeah. Now explain right. that a little bit because people 18, were pissed off about it. It was eighteen with seven fifty. Same difference. Um, look, you know, the number one thing I'd say is it in in law. There's a lot of people don't understand this. It's kind of interesting. In law, you can be prosecuted for not maximizing profits. In fact, I know people who have. And you have to do everything in your power to make as much money as possible in the system we've got. That's, the, that's business. You can't hold back. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, can't, you can't go halfway. And if we did the analysis, we said, we can go to seven fifty. dollars so, For $13? Uh-huh. And nothing's changed. You know, people, help, people will pay the seven fifty. Not people, insurance companies, companies, et cetera. No one's got to actually, you know, Throw but, the bills but, down. But if the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies have to pay more for it, don't they have to charge regular people absolutely, more? Absolutely. Absolutely. why would you want that? This I don't want that. This is one of the smallest drugs around. This is not Lipitor. This is not something everyone's taking. This is a few thousand people take this medicine. It's very rarely used. So in the scheme of things, this is 0.0001% of the drug business. You know, if if you know, if Ghost tried to charge, you know, 750 for his next record, just as just as few people would buy it next time around, but the, uh, you know, it wouldn't change the music business as a whole yeah, but because somebody, there's other records out there. But mm-hmm. somebody has to be buying this drug. Yeah, and you. So, mean, so for the people that are buying it, even if it is a small few, why jack up the price on it? There's a there's drugs three times this price, ten times this price. This is not like an insane price. If people you if you know the drug business, you know that this is not that expensive. You know, this is this is like. In, in the higher end range, but in the lower higher end range. There's drugs that are $2 million a year. But you, know? you did say if somebody can't afford it, you would give it to them Absolutely, for free. man. I'm not going to let someone die. I mean, I'm well, not an animal. How in touch with you? We have a system, man. It's, it's, if you don't have insurance, you get it for free right off the bat. How? Right off the bat. We just, it's well, done. What's the system? How do I get in touch with you? 65% of our I'm drugs. I'm Charlie Sheen. I need the drug. 
How do I get in touch? I don't think Travis Cheney's in touch for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so your doctor prescribes it. Okay. You got to talk to your doctor first, right? Your doctor says, all right, you need this drug. Writes a prescription. Prescription gets sent to our pharmacy. Our pharmacy says, hey, where's the insurance? You say, I don't have any. So, all right, fill out this form and you get the drug. Sixty, two thirds of the drug we sell for free. For free. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't know that. People don't want to know that. Again, a lot of times, you know, and you've seen this, I'm sure, in hip hop. A lot of times, people want an enemy. They're going to get an enemy one way or the other, yeah. and you can say whatever you want, but it's it's people who want the enemy, you know, and if I'm the enemy for you, good, I'm happy, man. I'm fulfilling some need in your life. Great. So what is it that you got arrested for? Was it- uh, so totally other subject. Uh, mm-hmm. It's an indictment. Uh, yeah, I don't bail. Fresh out, of, fresh out of jail right now. Uh, yeah. The rap song. It's been about a month. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's parallels are, are there. Um, so what were you arrested for? Uh, according to the government, uh, securities fraud. You know, uh, dispute the allegations. Uh, just picked up a lawyer, Ben Braffman, who represented uh, Diddy, J, uh, Fifty. Uh, also represented some non-rappers. Best, probably the best lawyer in the world, and uh, I'm confident I'll, I'll beat the charges. What exactly is security fraud? Well, uh, you know, I can't get into too many details. Credit card scams? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Credit card You're the scam reason Rush Card shut down. Yes, <laughs> yes, all my fault. I admit it on 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 the air. Uh, no, uh, obviously, uh, I don't know. Don't even know what that is. But the, uh, <laughs> uh, that's you know, also Simmons credit card. That's what no, no, I know what it is. Oh. I just, I just don't want some DA listening. Oh, okay, like, okay, okay. <laughs> let's, let's do it. <laughs> You're worried about the DA listening, but you was on a video last week on World Star with a bunch of goons in masks threatening someone. Like, come on, buddy. You know, you know uh, people get arrested for that all the time in hip hop. No, I do, I do. You know, look, like I said, you know. I have a reputation of finance as well. You don't say shit about me and not expect it back, some repercussions. And I'm not about to change who I am um, ever, you know, and uh, I'm authentic. You know, every lawyer in the world's like, Martin, this is the stupidest idea on the face of the earth, you going on a camera and insulting a rap guy. Like, are you out of your mind? And I'm like, look, at the end of the day, I'm me. You're going to have to deal with it. And they're like, all right, we could deal with it. And then when you was on TMZ, you was acting like more of a douche. You wouldn't answer no questions. Like, why even do the interview if you was... I'd be happy to answer questions. Look, I mean, people start off with me being a douche. I could be a very ha- happy, normal dude. But, like, the guy asked me right off the bat. He's like, uh, is this a good idea, you know, for you to be insulted? I'm like, all right, what are you, you going to give me advice? But you just said your lawyer said it was the dumbest idea ever. So if, if Harvey, who is a lawyer? Because you asked him. You said, Harvey, is are, he, he's are not you an a attorney? criminal lawyer, is he? Yeah, he hasn't been in a courtroom, has he? Like, this is like, bro, like, don't. You know, I can self-deprecate myself, but don't come at me. You know, it's like I, I'm not an idiot. Clearly, there's some satire in this video. You know, it's 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 meant to be a mix of satire and a mix of reality. And it's your own sketch. Yes. So you're not really having goons that you you don't really. Want I have, have goons to. for real, said, but you know, it's me. You know, one of them, you one of them, goons up couple here with of them may be here, but they the be here, then. or outside. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now, what about Bobby Schmurter? Are you Were you really trying to buy, bail out Bobby Schmurter? I would, would have loved to, and I was in, in conversations with his attorney a day before I got arrested. But now you can't do it. You know, I got, I got plenty of my own business to deal with, and as far as I know, his trial is coming up soon enough. So, right. unfortunately for Bobby, I mean, he's, again, this is, we're talking about injustice and the criminal justice system. This poor guy, I was bailed out, I literally spent three hours in jail. Three fucking hours, maybe four. You went to and the tombs? You went downtown and everything? I went downtown. I was, oh, yes. And uh, I owed the tombs, yes, uh, in Brooklyn. And um, they got me my own cell. They got me, like, it was like. Oh, that doesn't happen to everybody. White glove treatment, oh, roll yeah. out the red white carpet. White privilege, basically. You know, I don't know. Or rich privilege. Which whatever rich privilege, it is. Rich privilege. But whatever it is. But I heard the guys in the cell next door talking GS9. They're like, you know, talking about stabbings and shootings. I'm sitting there like, oh, I want to be in that cell. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know they're like, no, nah, we're gonna keep keep this guy separate. And uh, I was out in three hours. Now, what's your three relationship hours. with Donald Trump? Uh, I don't like the dude, but no, I just want to finish that point on the on the jail real quick. Mm-hmm. So, because I think it's really insane. Three hours, I'm in and out. This cat's been in jail a year. Mm-hmm. Jail is supposed to be a temporary spot that you go in and out of while your lawyer gets your ass out of there. You put up some money, something. You don't have to put up much money. The one of the one of the amendments of the Constitution, I think it's the Eighth Amendment, says the the government the, will not impose unreasonable bail. Mm-hmm. And what they're doing to Bobby is ridiculously unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's disgusting. And as I've seen it, now I'm an opportunist. I said, look, I can take this guy out of jail. I've got the money. I've got the lawyer. Now every lawyer in the country, uh, in New York especially, and you know, I can get him out of jail tomorrow. 
I'll uh, put up the two. Uh, he's, you know, he'll wear a bracelet for me or something. You know. Then why don't you? It's too late now. Yeah, I, gotta, I would love for you to do that, but why? Like, what's the reasoning? Uh, two reasons. Has- it's unfair. It's bull. You know, the guy shouldn't be in jail. Again, prison is one thing. You get convicted, you do the time, right? The jury decided, looked at evidence, and said, you're guilty, you're guilty. You got to do the time. You got his man up. Just do it. But this man is innocent until proven guilty. That That's the fact. basic concept. Right. To incarcerate him before the guy's actually convicted and to, and to deny his bail seven times? That's but it's a lot of people in that situation. Why Bobby Smarter? Because you know it'll bring you attention? Well, I heard about it. Okay. You know, I don't know anyone else right. in that situation. My boy, you know, some of my boys in that video, for instance, were in that situation. Oh, I go throw down for them immediately, you know. And I don't know Bobby, uh, but, you know, everyone knows the song, uh, his, his music. And, What's uh, the name of it? Hot. Hot what? <laughs> hot boy, hot boy, I believe. There you hot go. boy, correct, correct really name. Boy? I believe, I believe that's what Billboard. Uh, yeah, that's what Billboard has. It yeah, has. that's right. That's the name of the song. Now, um, could you potentially lose your fortune now with all of the uh, investigations know. going on? Never, 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 never. You got money over in Switzerland, hidden and stuff Shh. like that. No, no, never. I would never do something like that, man. Mm-hmm. Well, no. why do you? Why do you want to be? Famous, like I always say, if I had that much money, I wouldn't want nobody to know who I am. You know, the problem is, it just happens one way, whether you like it or not. Not really. I would have never heard of you if you didn't try to buy the Wu Tang album, if you didn't jack up the prices. But for how HIV do you? Well, I still wanted to buy it. So yeah. how do you buy it and be anonymous? It's not easy. I mean, for you know? Wu Tang, it's good press for them because they've done something no one's done before. Sold their album as a piece of artwork. Yes, that's for right. For two million dollars. But you it's haven't a, even heard it. Then. It's a new thing. Well, I, no one's heard it. I heard a little he bit. Heard I heard a little. I heard no, a little bit. No, I mean before bit. you bought mm-hmm. it. No, I would. I would debut it right on here. You know, I. I mean, I love hip hop. I love. Uh, I mean, at this point, hip hop has va- vastly, vastly surpassed rock. They stayed a rock. Without question, it's not the, even close. Mm-hmm. Rock's in the toilet, and there's not one rock artist I'm excited about. There's like 20, 30 hip. I had Fetty Wap come do my Christmas party. You know, uh, How much you pay him? <laughs> no, leave that one alone. Uh, <laughs> a good amount, and uh, he was great. You know, the guy killed it. You know, well, and, if you love hip hop, you'd never disrespect Ghostface Killer. I understand you feel like he it came was, at you. It was a tough decision. I'll be clear, it was a tough decision, but. Yeah. Because it actually will make hip hop people look at you crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, how dare he talk about you bought this? Who is album. this Yakub's child? This is Ghostface. Talking He's an crazy icon to the God, Ghostface. Part of Wu Tang Clan, one of the greatest groups of all time. He's one of the greatest rappers ever, but he's still a man. He still bleeds the same blood as me, and is both red. And you want to talk? I'm not the one. Do you think That's you it. have Michael Jackson's nose? No, I I, <laughs> I got a beautiful nose. He should be one to talk. Uh, if he were here right now, I'd smack him right in the face. No, you wouldn't. Don't right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't bring Ghost Ghost in another room. <laughs> no. You would not smack Ghost Absolutely. Face. Would you buy his album? Absolutely. I have all, all, all his albums. I got 36 seasons. I got everything. 36 I, Chambers? What the hell is wrong with you? Seasons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That came yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you said so Chambers. Right. Right. That's a Ghost Face solo do. album. Now, back no, to he's right. Back to Donald Trump. Now, he called you a young brat. No, no, back to that. You will not smack Ghost Face Killer. If you say so, I'll do the, do you that honor. I'm just saying, Ghostface yeah. got a lot of people that love him. It's Mac Fire out and you. And I know you're saying that, but you know, you walk outside, and it, the streets and are still the streets. Fight. Anybody can get it, I don't think it, you Martin. want those problems. You would smack Ghost. Martin, yes. anybody can get it, Martin. <laughs> I know this. And we're in the midst of this you whole think Black Lives you think, Matter thing. Racial tension is at all time high. They'd love to chase you back don't to the caucus mountains. Don't make it a race thing. At the end of the day, there's people in my family who've been shot and killed. You know, this, you, you did know. you shoot him and kill him? <laughs> no. If not, it doesn't matter. What so, wait, if you about? smack Ghost and he, <laughs> like he beats you up, would that be justified on his part, though? He could try, man. Would you call the police on him if he beat you up? What's that? Would you, would you call the police on Ghost if he beat you up? No. Hell no. Just say that on camera again. Then. I would <laughs> never call the police. It's open season. Come at me. It don't matter. <laughs> Papa Wu. It Remember when you matter. did the action, Bronson? It don't matter. Do it to Martin Strelly. And he's talking crazy. Open season. And in fact, I think there's a saying y'all familiar with. It's called, I wish you would. <laughs> you entitled, privileged prick. Who are you? You're going back to this. I'm telling you, I'm from the streets. I, you know what? 2009. How much money do you think I had in my bank account? That was six years ago. Um, a couple million. Hundred dollars. Really? Can I borrow a hundred dollars? Nope. <laughs> you were at the, you were at the Illuminati meeting yesterday. That. Yeah, okay. I want to borrow money from you. Before you got here, you said he was going to ask you for hundred thousand dollars and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you got plenty of your own connections. I, I just don't want you to get beat up, man. I mean, I do, but I don't. It is what it is. You're you kind of causing it on yourself. Have you gotten beaten up? Never in my life. I fought many times. And had, you, so you can fight. I've been jumped. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. Most people in fights, they they most people when they fight, they don't want to. 
you know how it is. You know, no one wants to kill another man. You know? Really? What world most, are you from? <laughs> most of, I've been in many fights in Brooklyn. Like it's it's not about like you know you you know you knock a guy out. You don't keep wailing on him. You're just like, all right. No. Now you know. New era, Martin. New, New era, different think? type culture. Yes. Right. Now, let me go to Donald Trump. Now he called you a spoiled brat. Kim. You know, that's the okay. bullshit. I kind of agree with him, though. You know, who, you know, he inherited, what, a million bucks, 100 million? Bucks? Nobody knows, right? Right, right, right? And in fact, if you look at the numbers, he actually should be way richer than he is. He's mm. been, he's been fing up, actually. Uh, he hasn't made as much money as he could have. In mm. fact, he, all you had to do to be Trump is inherit that money and, and put it away and just put it in your boys, yeah. and you'd be fine. The, fund he mentioned he'd, yeah. he'd be more he'd be the richest man in the world mm -hmm. so in fact he hasn't been a good businessman he talks way too much we all know that and at the end of the day you know who's a spoiled brat i'm sorry where where i come from that means like you know entitled privilege etc no i my first job i had two choices i was in work at carville ice cream putting ice cream down uh for, for customers or i worked at a hedge fund i was lucky enough to get a job at a hedge fund but I didn't even have suits to wear to the hedge fund. I didn't know how to dress. Like, I, it was ridiculous. I wore white socks with the f you know, money, dress shoes. Money can change people. I yes, mean, you, you clearly don't sound like that same humble person that you were. And how did you I wasn't up, humble back then. <laughs> how did you end up going to Hunter if your family didn't have money? It was, it's, it's a school for the intellectually gifted. It tends to have a lot of wealthy Manhattan mm -hmm. students, but it's got poor students as well. Now, it's, it's, some, it's, it's a rumor that you didn't really graduate from Hunter. That's true. It's not a rumor. It's fact. You didn't graduate. Okay. It's fact. Yeah. Oh, really? It's fact. What happened? I left early. I uh, finished high school early. Uh, you know, school was never for me, as I mentioned. Uh, I was always getting in trouble. Uh, always, you know, you know, I was I was a very gifted kid, as a, as they said to me, uh, an intellectually gifted kid. And school for me just it didn't it lost interest. The academic race of being number one mm -hmm. in in school it just it may, had no point to me. I was in a rock band. Uh, I was uh, just learned more and more about girls was more interested in girls than I was in school and everyone else was interested in knowing the seventh level of calculus is like look I can stop at the first level second level like I don't need to keep doing this no point right. and I felt smart enough so I went to the working world when I was 17 worked out very well for me and uh, I didn't need to finish school and you know I went to City College I could have gone to Ivy League school I didn't I was you, you were know. the Baruch right yeah so you had a hundred dollars in 2009 how'd you get your first million I started a drug company called Retrofin it was the fastest growing drug company probably ever. How did that happen? How do you yeah, just how do you start, you start a drug, drug company? company? You you got it's it's really fucking hard because uh, it's easy to start an internet company. Mm -hmm. You know, you go online, you could do it. You program a little bit, etc. Starting a drug company is close to impossible because you need hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. So how did you do it? Go to investors like your your boys. I mean, I, I'm I'm, I'm still you know stunned because you know why? Because I'm black. No, just to, that is the most elite of the elite. Because my hoodie See, says by ooh, nature. You just. Because I got a Wu Tang hat on. Why couldn't I be in Bridger Capital? Because it's one of the most elite and secret places there is. That is a fact. And it's not about white or black, my dude. It's nobody knows what that is. And so you shouldn't know, be talking about it. No. And if you know what that is, <laughs> die tomorrow. first time, last time. If you know what that <laughs> is, it's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when. Not only was I talking about it, it's I posted a different, it on the gram. I was Snapchatting from it's there. It's a different level. It's like mm -hmm. you. That's like. The highest of the highest, mm -hmm. like that's, you know, don't don't speak of it, and, you know, that's cool, but it's great, you know, and I have different perspective, and it doesn't matter, you know, but no, I, am I a little surprised, a radio guy? Yeah, I'm a little surprised. You, know? okay. you do know how it's turned made eighty four million dollars. There's rich year. radio guys. I'm not yeah. saying there aren't, but I'm just saying, you know, that's. That's a special place, and it's a very, very elite, secret, super secret. But you're trying to distract from how you made your first million dollars. Yeah, no, so I started a drug company. He started his own okay. pharmaceutical company. He got That's investors. the company now that you actually, with the securities for a charge, has got arrested. There's for. a little bit of involvement there, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, Are you scared to go to jail? No, I'm not scared of anything in life. You know, now, there's a lot of Wu Tang fans in jail. <laughs> you heard about what happened to Kanye West, right? No. They put a finger up his. You know what they're gonna do to you in jail? You're talking about Amber Rose? Yeah. yeah. She can get every day, right? When you that's in jail. That's in plain daylight. <laughs> Andre Rose. You're real rich, guys. So what's the craziest thing that you've done? Because we've all seen Wolf of Wall Street. What's the craziest thing that you bought and the craziest thing that you've done? Dude, I'm not. I'm a regular guy. No, I you're mean, not. You bought um, an album for $2 million. But I did that to, to show that I care about art. And then mm -hmm. today, there's all, these, all this wealth, right? Mm -hmm. There's all this crazy wealth. Kanye was here. All he could talk about was billionaires. And I felt the same way you did. It's like, why are you all about the money? Dude? Yeah. And... and Instead of spending like two millions, that was a waste of money, 
right? Uh, yeah. Well, like, I wouldn't say waste of money if you're a Wu-Tang fan. Is it you know, an investment or something that it's you think not gonna a, be worth more you're later? You're gonna lose money on this. I knew that going into it. The point is I wanted to show respect for art. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that's something that people are less and less, I think, maybe in some ways, not doing these days. And um, you know, for me it was it was to send a message to the world that like, look, you can think about all these material things in life, but at the end of the day, music is arguably, and that's why you're so popular. You know, I was just out with Maria Bartiromo. I'm just sitting there like, my big deal today is with you. It's not with her. You know, compared to, you know, her viewership's one-tenth of it. Stop riding, man. And look at it. And, uh... <laughs> it, it, you guys stupid, man. Talking reckless. Uh, at you the end of the day... You that's hip-hop, though. You Right now, if you want to be in hip hop, right now, talking, right, talking man. reckless like crazy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the uh, look, I love, I love music. I want to send a message. No other rich guy was willing to do this, but why? You know, you guys love music too. Where are you at? And I said, I'll, I'll show you how much I love music. Music means more to me than anything. And so, so buying that album is the most ridiculous thing I've done. But other than that, man, I'm, I'm a normal guy. Like I, I webcast, as you may know, I webcast my day. Right. right. I sit there and eat a bagel. I ate, last night. I ate rice aroni. I'm not eating there. I'm not having a lot of waiter put the lobster on like i'm a normal dude the money's stacking up that's great i hope it keeps stacking up but okay. you know were you upset that you didn't get the response you thought you would get from no. the guys from the wu-tang i this is exactly what i wanted you know i mean this is a plane plane into my hand you know and what happens next you'll see so basically this is just stunting this is no. white people stunting <laughs> that's what it was, it was white, white people, people stunting. we buy jewelry we buy jewelry <laughs> you bought albums. a two million dollar wu-tang there you yeah. go no i i i'm thinking about getting i have a jacob i've got uh you got a what jacob what I got. I bought uh, big Jake. mics, uh, killer mics. Jacob. Jacob watch. Yeah. Killer Mike wears a Jacob watch. I bought it. Not anymore. That's one of my yeah. <laughs> I, I, I snatched his watch. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> what are you doing for the Black Lives Matter movement? Mm. Well, you know, as I mentioned to your uh, to you, to your colleague, uh, uh, Revolt. You know, there's one man in my life that um, there's a few men, a few black men that have mattered in my life more than you can imagine. Um, one is uh, a guy in D.C. who's my mentor. He's very close to the president and uh, has shepherded me through a lot of business success. Uh, and another man is a man who passed away who I never met, never had the ability to meet. His name Percy Julian. Percy was uh, a name nobody knows. Mm -hmm. He is the most important, arguably, I would say, one of the most important men in pharmaceutical history. Mm -hmm. And pharma guys don't know who he is. I won't expect anyone else to know who he is. But Percy started a drug company in the 50s. And uh, as a black guy, it's practically impossible. You know, but the guy was so good at chemistry. And this is... This, this is a, a PhD chemist, you know, nerdiest guy you can imagine. No one would respect him. No one would let him make money. And he could synthesize steroids synthetically. They had to make them semi-synthetically. It was just very difficult. So he, he invented a new so-called synthesis route where he can make steroids cheaply and mass produce them. And today, everyone in this room has taken a steroid at some point in their life, uh, prednisone or something like that for, for pretty much whatever ails you. And, and thanks to, to Percy, the, the world changed. But more importantly... The, the picture I'll never forget is Percy standing up, photo of his company he just started. And he left the drug company. He was a, he was a, a grunt chemist. And he's like, I'm going to start my own drug company. So he did it. And he built his drug company. And they, that company he left ended up buying it back for 20 million bucks, which today, well, that was 50, 60 years ago. And the picture I'll never forget in my life, I, brought, uh, I was actually crying when I watched this interview because it, it's a PBS documentary. And it's, uh, it's called The Forgotten Genius, per the story of Percy Julian. And it was a photo of him standing up, a photo of his company. I've got one of these photos. It's, it's pretty much the United Nations and my company. But at this company, it was him and a lab coat, black guy, and like 30, 40, 50 white people behind him. And it just brought a tear to my eye because this, uh, this, whole, this whole documentary talked about how this guy struggled and fought and, and went against all, all the pain and hate that people had for him. And he just, he just focused on his chemistry and he, and he changed the world, not just one time, but five times. No one even knows who this guy is. So you got black friends, but what are you doing for the Black Lives Matter movement? The movement itself, um, you know, at the moment, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm involved in a lot of stuff. And I got to figure that out. Um, so, like, at the end of the day, like, I would love to do some stuff for Flint. I would love to do some stuff for everything. But as you can imagine, after you're arrested, your life changes. So are your assets frozen right now? No, no, no. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's still, you know, it's crazy. You know, I mean... Uh, but you, I mean, you have resources. I mean, you know, if you spend two million dollars on an album, you can spend money. Will you tell me what I th you think. I, I, should I do. think you should donate some money to like the activists, you know, like the like the D rays of the world, the netters, because they go around traveling, and you know, a lot of times they just need funding just to keep yeah. going. You I, know what I'm saying? I'm interested in doing that. You know, I, at the end of the day, you know, right now, uh, you know, there's uh, ODB used to say this. Uh, I'm all about me right now, and when people come and try to troll me. I just say that, and uh, 
you know, at the end of the day, there's sometimes you got to focus on yourself. And for now, I'm in so much that I gotta I gotta do that. And uh, you know, obviously, you know, but the movement spoke spoke to me. I just you know, my my world has been so crazy that I I can't. I mean, you can always just write a six-figure check to see the God World LLC, and um, <laughs> I'll donate. I was the about funds. to do it. I'll donate the funds <laughs> until to you the laugh. You f***ed it up, Envy. But well, we, uh, well, we appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. I and, still don't know how I feel about you. Um, you still have a very douchey air about you. All right. But I like the fact you came from nothing and made something happen, especially that you only had a hundred dollars. Back in 2000. You said your mom is still a janitor to this day? Yes. You said that. You, you have enough money, but you, you still got your mom being quit. a janitor? Oh, she, she won't. won't okay, quit. I get it. I beg her every day. Mm -hmm. She just, she doesn't understand the money and markets and things like this. Just, she just, I, I'm going to work for you guys, and that's it. She's a great mom. All right. And Ghostface is going to smack the shit out you. We'll see, man. Bring it. I wish he would. All right. <laughs> I wish he would. <laughs> the Martin. leader of the Deuce Tang clan. <laughs> the Dizzle, ladies and gentlemen. Martin, Martin Strascelli. Strascelli. Chappelle. Martin what? Strascelli. Yeah. Strascelli. Yes. It's the Breakfast Club. Charlo Magni. Hey, 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 hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.